Hello and welcome to the Fieldcraft server. My name is Weird and Bearded and today I need to look where I'm going. We are going to be going past the new base to a little area just behind. This is something we started working on in a recent stream. Completely unintentional. It just sort of happened 50 minutes into the stream. I started working on a furnace-based XP farm. So today I need to get that finished off and make improvements. So the way the furnace-based XP farm works is essentially as you smelt stuff, the furnace gets XP. So if you have stuff constantly smelting and you have levers in front to stop things being pulled out of the furnaces, then you can remove things from the furnaces and get the XP from them, giving you large amounts of XP nice and quickly. Currently, we are smelting cactus. Well, we will be smelting cactus. We don't actually have um, the fuel input in yet, but we have this little cactus area which we just saw a little bit of cactus sprout from. And I am going to take it down. It is not good enough. We're not going to be using cactus. We are going to be using other things. So yeah, the first step is to take this all apart and cover up the grass area. Make it look exactly as it was. I have a copy of the mountain next to me just so I can make sure I'm doing this correctly. Now, don't get me wrong. Cactus is great. Very easy to harvest. You can harvest it completely passively. All you need is a block slightly off to the side and then when it grows up, it grows up next to the block and the cactus pops off. Really easy to do. Unfortunately, it's just not fast enough. I figured out that to feed the furnace array, I would need about 18 layers of it. So instead of that, we're going to be using kelp. Kelp. It can grow next to other kelp, which is very useful for saving space. We can grow four times as much within the same area. In fact, slightly more than that. Also, it grows very tall and grows quite quickly. So we should be able to get a lot more out of the same area. Obviously, the bottom is going to be a lot bigger. And in fact, because of this, we're going to have to take this area and dig down 25 blocks. I can't really go up much further, partly because I'm already going into the landscape and partly because that's where the villager hall is going to be. So we're going down 25 blocks. I'm even thinking we're going to have the bamboo farm below this. But let's get the kelp done first. Bamboo is going to be used for fuel. Let's start digging. What a pleasant little pit I've dug for myself. You'll notice I haven't done any form of decorating. I don't need to. This isn't um, something that's ever going to be seen. I'm only going to be seeing the furnaces, so I'm going to ignore all the aesthetics. I'm just going to focus on functionality. And the way that functionality is going to work is going to be a flying machine going back and forth. I have everything I need for the flying machine and the return system. I have to figure out exactly how I'm going to do the activation, but for now, let's build this in the middle of the room so everybody can see how this works. So we have an obsidian block, basically just to stop this coming too far back. We have one, two, three, four, five slime blocks and a regular block at the end so it doesn't connect to any of the walls that I don't want it to. We're using five slime blocks just because that makes this six long and the room is 12 long, so you know. Maths. On either side, we are going to have a sticky piston, I think, this end, and then an observer. On the other side of things, here and here, another sticky piston, another observer. And then take this out to the side. Then over here we need to dig out a slot for this to fit into, so let me dig that out. So the flying machine should slot in perfectly into this little gap. Obviously we got rid of the walls and the ceiling, I will be filling those back in in just a moment. But first of all I want an effect when this block hits the back, so we're going to get rid of this small section. Including that block, let's make our way in. So we're going to detect that with an observer and then we just need a line of redstone so that when that comes along it's going to activate this block activating this piston and hopefully 
everything will head back. So I'm just going to fill in all of the rest of this with obsidian. That way the uh, flying blocks aren't going to try to take anything away and everything will be lovely. Not redstone, obsidian. So let me get that filled back in. Let's give this thing a test. So it flies perfectly. Hopefully it will return. I may need to add a bit of delay. I'm not entirely sure. I have not tried this out. Yeah, I need to add a bit of delay to that. So uh, I'm going to go get a repeater. Around the back, I've taken out the redstone dust and I've added a string of four repeaters all in one tick. I need to maintain that one tick pulse so that the sticky pistons actually spit out their blocks rather than sticking like the sticky pistons would do. So now you can see my flying machine goes all the way in to the little copy hole and then returns. So now what we need to do is create an activation. I think I'm just going to do this with a daylight detector and say once a day this will run. I'm sure that should be fine. What could possibly go wrong? Let's find out. So now I'm on the other side of this flying machine. I have a daylight detector at the top. I brought the redstone signal down. Was a much point in showing you what I was doing. You wouldn't have seen. It's very dark down here. And that goes into a one tick pulse, which I'm going to block off now. So now I need to go get a couple of buckets of water, because once I get this going, I'm not going to be able to climb the ladder so easily. So I'm going to get this thing filled up. And before I do, I need to take out one block on the sides, because as this goes back and forth, it's going to take out all of the water sources on this level. So if I take out some of these, I should be able to make it... Yeah, I should be able to get the water in these sides so that the water does fill back in afterwards. So buckets, taking out the side, filling this up with water, and then this part is almost done. We have the water mostly in place. I still need to get some more water in, which we're going to be doing right now, because I need a way to move all of this kelp into these hoppers, and we're going to do that through water streams. So first of all, we're going to put down some packed ice. So let's replace that block, or we'll pretend that never happened. Which is silly, because I'm, I may well be getting rid of that block later anyway. But all of this is going to be turned into packed ice for our water to flow across. So just quickly getting that in. Once it gets to here, we need it to hang slightly over the edge. So that it can go over the hoppers as well. So we're getting rid of this dirt, of which I'm going to have to replace a little. Let's just put it straight there. We then have two chests. So the chests are what we're using to align the blocks. They will come right up against the chest and then they'll be slightly over the hoppers. And then I'm just going to fill in the more iron bars so that there is space for them to travel along. One bit done. Now, you may have noticed quite a lot of stone slabs. So along here, water flows every eight blocks. So Every eight blocks we have a stone slab and have the water in front of it. It's going to be slightly different along this side. Let me move all of these torches back one. Otherwise they're going to get in the way. So we're going to have water flowing down and all the items are going to be pushed into this bar so that they can be travelling in a nice channel. We're going to be stopping the water here so I need some more ice just to make sure they flow over properly. So get rid of these blocks up to there and then get the ice down but of course we don't want water flowing across them so we're going to be using pressure pl pressure plates to stop that from happening not so much from the pool because i'm gonna just space it out correctly anyway but more from here because the way this is going to have to work Let's count out it. Blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to have a slab there and a sign behind it and have the water up there. So the reason for that is along here, items will just fall down into the channel. But where we've got the slabs, I need to make sure that there's water on top of the slab as well so that the items still get pushed along. So once again, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The lab, sign, water. So we need to get that all the way along, and then I need to count out on here eight. I'm going to do that all the way across. Definitely doing slabs here because I don't want to get rid of these water sources. I just want to briefly cover them up. If I'm thinking about it, I think I need nine. So yeah, I'm going to do that all the way across, get that last bit of water in, and then you'll see why I'm doing this. But that is actually currently my way in and out, and it's about to be underwater, so I've got a couple of signs there just to stop the, we the water spreading out too much. The weather? I'm going to stop the weather from spreading. So what I need to do now is get water all the way along the back, all the way along the sides, and onto the first of these slabs, if I can place it correctly. Once it's over there, hopefully the water should spread across. Let's find out. Last bucket, will it spread? There we go. So that is now spreading right up to the uh, ice. I want to make sure I catch the torches. So now I need to get rid of the slabs and do that again one layer up. And then I can get the kelp in and this part of the farm is all done. So I am on my camera account. I think this is going to be setting off at any moment. It's, it's a little difficult to tell, but hopefully in a minute we should see the flying machine go across and get rid of the kelp. The kelp is not growing nearly as much as I was hoping it would. I'm tempted to put a delay on this and make it run every two days or something, but we're still going to have a steady stream of kelp coming through, and that's all I'm looking for. Um, the bamboo farm is going to be the same size as this, and bamboo does not grow as high. There we go, there's the flying machine. But yeah, with the bamboo not growing as high, we're not going to have all the fuel to go through all of this, so that's fine. There's no need for this to be a fast thing, it's just something that's going to be running constantly in the background. And there we have all our kelp slowly floating up to the top. And once we get up here, we should see it all going nicely into this stream. This is really the first full harvest. We had a small harvest early on. I got rid of all that kelp because I want to see just how much we've got in total. And there we go. It's coming into the stream. This is lovely. So I am going to wait for it all to come through because you will see uh, some of it goes down against the wall and then has to go back up. It takes a little it takes a little time. So I'll wait for it all to go through and then let's see how much we've got. One harvest has filled up one sixth of this, so we have two furnaces and mostly two hoppers full. It's not great, but it'll do. This isn't designed, as I said, to be super efficient. It's just going to be something that constantly runs in the background. So on to the bamboo farm. The bamboo farm is going to be slightly different it's going to work on pretty much the same principles. It's also going to take up the same spatial area, but it's going to have to work slightly differently. First of all, bamboo does need light. It needs a light level of at least nine. There are a few different lighting blocks I could have chosen. I decided to go for jack-o'-lanterns just because every part of a jack-o'-lantern is something that I have a farm for. So I needed to gather 900 pumpkins. I needed to shear all 900 pumpkins, which meant I had to craft up a few more shears. And of course, make all the torches craft them all together, 900 jack-o'-lanterns ready, because then for the dig, I had to line both walls, walls on either side with jack-o'-lanterns, because my uh, bamboo farm is just wide enough that if it was any wider, I would have difficulty lighting the central section. This is the perfect width for this, by pure coincidence. Random happenstance has helped me once again. Next, bamboo is going to be a little more difficult to collect. It's not growing in water, so we can't just let the water take all the bamboo up. We need to collect it from underneath with rails. So I built a rail system. On one side, I have where the blocks are collected. And on the other side, I have the minecart station, which is a different setup. Normally, you'd have them both at the same side. But this way, it meant that I could make sure the minecarts were empty at the end of each one and had collected everything. But then it was simply a case of getting in the grass for the bamboo, building the flying machine, which works exactly the same way as the one above, and then placing in all the bamboo 
and doing a test run. Which went well. So here we are, we have a working kelp farm, we also have a working bamboo farm. Feeding into the furnace, sorry, it's not quite finished yet, we need to do one more step. I also have a button over here to activate the bamboo farm. Once that's done, it should be happening automatically, so if I head down here, uh, I can break out these blocks, and you can see I have a comparator coming off of this hopper, so once everything starts coming through and this hopper gets full and when it gets empty every time one of those changes happens the bamboo farm will activate but now i need to get rid of all of the items from inside these furnaces so let's dig out underneath quickly and i think that takes me to the end good so i'm going to be building an auto dropper system so we need to take the items out of each uh, furnace and then I'm just going to throw them into lava. I do not need them. So let's dig this area out a little bit. That should be enough. I need to dig that down one. So we get a dropper. We put a redstone comparator coming off of it into a sticky piston. And then we have, let me dig this way just so I can place these observers properly. One observer over here, one there. I can't get out right now, but I'll be getting out this side anyway, so I'll dig this out. So then, I dig this down so that the items, uh, specifically the kelp coming out of this water stream, can fall into the same lava there. And then it's just placing hoppers. So we do that right to the back. Uh, then I should be able to climb out here and here. And then in theory, that should be the last activation. I am watching this on my uh, camera account. Everything seems to be working so far. I will get back to you when I've checked it. This is now working. It's going to take a while for it to spread all the way across and I might change the dropper system because it's going to get annoyingly noisy over here. But for now, let's make sure the main bit is working. So I need to get a lever in front of each of them. And if I flick the lever, an item stays in there and I can take out some XP. I probably... Oh, that's, that's also going to be a nuisance. I'll see if I can find another way to deal with that. But if I do it with this one, which has been going for quite a bit longer, I should be able to get a fair amount of XP from it. It's not been running overly long, but let's just see what happens. Some XP. So I am going to stay here, get this looking good. Either move the levers or the trap doors so that doesn't happen and also try and make this system a bit quieter. So yeah, next time you see this, it should be all complete. But down there we have our new furnace array XP farm. It's good, but it's not quite there, unfortunately. The uh, bamboo farm isn't quite big enough to produce enough bamboo to keep things running. So now the loop has stopped. So I would need to press the button again to get things restarted and realistically I'd have to wait for the bamboo to grow up some more. So I need to make the bamboo farm bigger. If I do and it is running in perpetuity, then I'm not quite producing enough kelp to keep all the furnaces filled with kelp. So I think in a future live stream, we're going to get them both doubled in size. It's not going to be that much work. I don't need to gather too many resources to do it. It's just moving some of the mechanics back. I could probably be able to get all of that done within a live stream. As I said, not much to it. But the concept is there. I think this is the first time I built something like this. And seeing as I was doing it without any plan, not even planning to build it, it works. And I've got this nice little canopy above, which I can't really plant anything on just because the trapdoors underneath are bottom trapdoors. So I can't actually have a block there. But it looks good. I'm, I am happy with this overall. It just needs a little bit of expansion. So 
but I don't have time for that today. In fact, this is going to be the end of the episode. So as I said, in a future live stream, we will be continuing with this. I'm not going to be streaming tomorrow, as unfortunately, I am needed elsewhere. But I will be streaming again next week, and then I'm going on holiday. So I'm going to have to get two episodes recorded next week. I'm sure that will be fine. What could possibly go wrong? But in the meantime, thank you all for watching. My name is Widden Bearded, and I will see you all in the future.